209 with uh, of the Jeet Kune Do dialogues with my good friend and colleague. I, this is your second appearance, right? Or third? Yes, sir. Remember? Second. Second. Okay. Uh, so this for those of you who do not recognize this dapper individual, right? This is uh, Kevin Seaman. Um, I, one of the reasons why I love talking to him is because he literally is a student of the mind, right? As was Bruce Lee and as is our mutual teacher, Dan Inasano. So Kevin Seaman, welcome back to the Jeet Kune Do Dialogues. Thank you, Dwight. It's great to be here. So I, I got I to I gotta do this, right? So like I said in the intro, I like talking to you because of the way your 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 mind works, right? Mm -hmm. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna make a a, a, a few um, statements and you um, verify, okay? okay? So you are a twice published uh, Jeet Kune Do author. I could not find volume one somehow. I <laughs> I'll have to send it to you. No, 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 no. I know I got it somewhere, but it's it's probably in another library or something, mm -hmm. right? Twice published. Um, author on Jeet Kune Do, two volumes of uh, Jun Fan Gung Fu, Seeking the Path of Jeet Kune Do, right? Correct. Okay. Thrice published mental training author with the winning mindset, the mind game of competition, and the mind game of MMA, correct? That is correct. Okay. You have trained fighters for Thai boxing competition, kickboxing competition, boxing competition, MMA competition, including renowned people like John Jones and Tamden McCrory, correct? That is correct. You yourself competed for over 10 years and you were the Eastern national champion for forms and full contact fighting, correct? Yes. You ran, I'm going somewhere with this, okay. <laughs> right? For all those- for You're all those embarrassing who, me. <laughs> right, for, no, 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 no. For all those who might be wondering, right? There, there's a method to my madness, as many of you should know by now. Okay. You ran East-West Martial Arts Academy for, um, for over 20 years. Yes. Correct? Correct. You also hosted- the Northeast Conference. So for people who don't know what I'm talking about, the, what is now has been called um, Train with the Masters in um, outside of Atlanta, Georgia at Sifu Francis Fong used to be known as the Southeast Conference. And mm -hmm. its sister camp was the Northeast Conference in upstate New York that you hosted for a number of years, correct? That is correct. Um Eight years. Okay. At age 37, you successfully competed in full contact stick fighting. This is 1992 in the Philippines, correct? Correct. Okay. Now, obviously, you know that I pulled all of that from kevinseaman.net. But, but now I have to ask you, this. don't you compete in master's tournaments in, in jiu-jitsu? Well, I... I've cut cut short here with COVID, but my okay. goal was to go to the worlds uh, the actual year that COVID hit. Okay, I was training for that, and okay. I still plan on on completing that. Okay. I have done uh, Naga tournaments and and things like that, but most of the times I don't get into the Masters tournament or the Masters division. <clears throat> they put me in with a thirty year olds, and <laughs> and frequently with the two hundred pounders. <laughs> <laughs> in jiu-jitsu but yeah okay. but it's you know i'm just out there trying to you know see what what i can do you know and and what i need to work on what i need to get better at right and you know uh test it okay but here's where i'm going with this okay so look at all that that i just listed when i put up the preview postcard for today's episode mm -hmm. a guy on facebook goes Oh, I've never heard of JKD Matrix. Uh, maybe, you know, who is this guy? And I'm thinking, do you not realize that just because you don't know who the guy is means absolutely nothing? 
So my question to you, what fuels that kind of mindset? Which kind of mindset? Are the, the this guy. This guy that goes, I ain't never heard of JKD Matrix. Mm -hmm. Right? And and he's not and 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 he's one of those whose personality I can tell from the way he, he forms questions on Facebook. Right? Okay. So I'm not I'm not condemn, con condemning him because a lot of people just don't know what they don't know. Right. But it's the mindset to to even formulate the question that way. You, you get well, what I'm saying? I understand. Yes. For myself, if I have a question, I usually do research, even if it's just minor research, just to understand something about the subject, the individual, what have you, before I make a statement or make a conclusion. Right. You know, a very wise man once said, never start from a conclusion. You know who said that? No. Bruce Lee. Okay. <laughs> never start from a conclusion. In other words, yeah. look at what you have and then, you know, try to expand on that and understand as much as you can about it before you come to a hypothesis or a conclusion. Right. Uh, one of the most amazing things that I've heard in the last few years was uh, when Kanye West came out and Paul McCartney played on his uh, played with him, and somebody said, "Wow, it's so nice for Kanye to give this old guy, uh, Paul McCartney, you know, a chance to get go somewhere in music." Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because they hadn't yeah. heard of Paul McCartney, suddenly he doesn't exist. But so, why is it? Why do they think that if they don't know about it, if they haven't heard about it? it never existed or it's not worthwhile well it's, it's hard to to ascertain what people's beliefs are and how they come to those conclusions um it's also uh i try not to tell people that what they believe is wrong mm -hmm. because their belief is a reality right as a matter of fact i'm doing a podcast my next podcast is going to be on that it's uh why people uh, believe in uh, perspective rather than in reality. Okay. And okay. yeah, you know, they, they, you see people with uh, all they show is their, their smiling face. They never show uh, the bad side. And, mm -hmm. and of course, why would we want to, mm -hmm. but by the same token um, it's, it's that perception that, is greater than reality, I think, in our 21st century. Um, people have more, uh, they're, they're more influenced by perception than reality. Because reality is harsh. Is that because of this? Uh, it's part of it, yeah. yeah. Because reality is harsh, bro. I mean, <laughs> you know, it tells you when you're wrong, you know? Right. Yeah. <laughs> it, tells yeah. You, it tells you ugly things. And, and you know, um, some people don't want to see that. So... Oh, but wait, uh, you'd but rather have the perception. You sound, you sound like if you're talking about training realistically in martial art. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you you sound you sound like if like like if you're saying, well, you know, you could exist in a bubble thinking that what you have is all that you need mm -hmm. until a different reality um, pops into your life. Well, some people could could perceive that. Yeah, they that could be their perception. Um, yeah. One of the things that I've always found is that uh, I, I respect every martial art. I respect every person until they give me a reason not to. Right. So I've always tried to give everybody a 10 to start out with. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I think that's because I'm a professional teacher. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, by the way, this is going to, I'm starting next week. I'm starting my 61st, that 61st semester teaching martial arts as a physical education course. A credit Back course at Cornell. At Cornell, ah. sixty-one semesters. That's thirty years. Whoa! Yes, sir. That's serious time. <laughs> <laughs> That's serious time. So wait. So but wait. So Cornell, Cornell was in the news the other day. Um. Um. No, I can't remember what. Oh, there's some smart people coming out of there. That's why. Well, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. That 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 that, that might have been it. Okay. Oh, all right. So, um, so you are sm you are way smarter than I am, and you don't get yourself involved in 
the Facebook Jeet Kune Do discussions, right? So, but, so forgive me, but I'm going to try to drag you into a couple of them, right? <laughs> During our time here together. I am not naive. I knew exactly what this was, <laughs> was going to go on here today. All right. Okay. So, so since you have written a book, two books with the type, with the words Jun Fan Gung Fu in them, Mm -hmm. Can you answer this recent Facebook question? <clears throat> what is Jun Fan kickboxing? What is Jun Fan kickboxing? Well, yes. I can only tell you what I would perceive it as. Okay. Uh, my perception of that is when you're uh, in a continuous flow of striking, just like in boxing, boxing is boxing, you're hitting. Okay. And when you start to clinch, the referee will step in and say, break, clean break, yeah. because that's not boxing. All right. In Muay Thai, when somebody grabs, they're still moving. There's still stuff going on. There's still action. So, you know, that would be what we would call the plum in Muay Thai. Okay. Or the clinch. And it's not outside range. I would say Jun Fan kickboxing, my perception of that would be the striking without tying up, trapping, immobilizing, uh, or being on the ground. Okay. So now differentiate <laughs> <laughs> differentiate for me then between Jun Fan kickboxing and Jun Fan Kung Fu. Well, uh, I got to tell you, the first time I heard Jun Fan kickboxing was from Tim Tackett and, uh, and Chris Kent. Mm -hmm. in their book. Mm -hmm. And so I'd never, I, I was like right away, well, I like kickboxing and I want to know more about this. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I don't usually use that term, Jun Fan kickboxing. Mm -hmm. um, I just call it Jun Fan or Jeet Kune Do. Right. Yeah. And I think Gong Fu, the Jun Fan Gong Fu, that uh, surma surmises all of it. So it's sort of a blanket term. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that uh, I have seen, and, and you, you see this a lot on, on the I Love Jeet Kune Do side, is that there is an obvious um, void of grappling and weaponry in Jeet Kune Do, in mm -hmm. Jun Fan and Jeet Kune Do. And I think this was because of the time period, first of all. Yeah. You remember back then, you were training back then. You know, I well, started, then, I trained. Well, not in the 60s. <laughs> no, I started training 50 years ago. Right. Yeah. In fact, it's 50 years uh, this year. So, uh -huh. well, last year is uh, 2021. So, you know, back then, I remember getting scolded by my teacher because I wanted to go and spar with the Kempo Karate guys and with other people, the Shotokan guys, mm -hmm. you know, and he's like, no, you don't do that. You stay within our realm. And I was do I was uh, studying Choi Li Fat Kung Fu. It right. was a certain system called Pak Sing. So Pak Sing Choi Li Fat and Hung Sing Choi Li Fat are different. Uh -huh. And my teacher came from Hong Kong. I met him as kind of a, a accidentally. And it was, uh, the class was advertised as Chinese karate. Right. <laughs> because nobody knew what Kung Fu was. It wasn't a right. word. You yeah. know, it wasn't a term. And, and I remember asking him, well, what would you call this? And he goes, Goksot. And I go, that's not a good word. You shouldn't call it that. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you have another word? <laughs> and he kind of looked at me, you know, like quizzically. And, and he said, uh, Chuan Fa. And I go, well, what does that mean? And he told me. And I go, oh, that's good. Like, right. I like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. But Kung Fu wasn't a word until the series came around. At least we didn't know about it. Mm -hmm. And there was an awful lot we didn't know. Do, do you remember? Do you remember? I think it's uh, uh, um, Henry Cho's first book was called Korean Karate. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 I believe. Right. Yeah. Because, yeah. Because, yeah. well, you know what you know. Um, it, it, so now, if we, if, we, if, we, if, we, if we move forward from 50 years ago, so now you, are, you have instructor credentials in Jeet Kune Do, in Muay Thai, in Filipino Kali, um, in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So going back again to Facebook discussions, mm -hmm. there are people 
who would class you as being a style hopper, mm -hmm. right? Somebody who jumps around from style to style. Okay. And the, and the reason why, here, because they, they can even tell you the reason why you do what you do. Mm -hmm. The reason why is because you don't have what it takes for the Jeet Kune Do daily grind. You don't have what it takes to work on perfecting a few simple techniques. So because you don't have that discipline, you get bored and that's what makes you jump to other styles to avoid boredom. Wow, I didn't know I was that shallow. I, yeah, I had no idea. <laughs> um, so uh, let, let me, let me. So, 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 yeah, so, 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 um, I'm gonna, so, I'm gonna, so, yeah. 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 <laughs> so I started in Kung Fu in 1971. I started in Judo in 1969, at the end of 1969. Mm -hmm. um, 1970, I was doing a little bit of boxing. I started kind of getting my, my feet wet with that. I love the contact. I've been boxing since I was 18. I started martial arts at 16. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I've continually, I still box. I mean, I don't, I don't go with hard contact anymore because it's not safe. I'm 67 freaking years old. You know, <laughs> my brain has shrunk and I don't want to <laughs> jostling around in my head yeah. because I, I frankly, I want to, I want to be aware of my surroundings and, and, you know, the people I love and I want to be intelligent when I speak. So I've given up hard sparring. Uh, I don't mind getting kicked in the leg or in the body and that kind of stuff or hit. Um, I just don't do the hard throw down uh, boxing that I used to do. Yeah. Um, so then I started in, uh, I met Dan and Asanto in 1976. Hey, wait, At hang on a second together. here. Hang on a second here. Mm -hmm. I just got a notification that Facebook stopped our broadcast. No way. Yeah. Did what I did say we Dan and Asano? No. <laughs> what the heck did we say? That's interesting. So I guess we're still we're, okay. So we're probably still live on on um, on the YouTube, but it says and here you are, that, and you're recording, so people can pick it up later. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, if right? you can't do anything about it, let's commence. Um, that's I'd, I'd love to know what what it is that we may have violated or something. Did you say any? What did you say? I didn't say anything. I didn't <laughs> swear. I rolled my sleeves up. Maybe they got intimidated. <laughs> That's probably it. That's People, probably I just it. saw somebody else check in. Yeah. So somebody commented. All right. So, okay. So let's, let's, keep let's going. see. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll keep going. And, and uh, I mean, okay. cause it's going to end up on, it's good. Okay. So, yeah. so over on oh, YouTube, they say it's working. 1976. Right? I, 75, I met a guy who uh, was teaching Filipino martial arts. I didn't know there was such a thing. Mm -hmm. He was also a boxer and uh, and a black belt in Shotokan under Nishiyama in the JKA. And he was an, uh, a national champion of some sort, like a, I guess it was hard contact stuff back then, a collegiate champion. That's right. Um, and his name was Bill Burke, who he's not with us anymore, but he introduced me to a lot of people. Um, yeah, Jean LaBelle, uh, Dan and Asano, uh, several different individuals. And actually I was, was a conduit for me to meet Ajahn Chai. Right. <clears throat> so I, I knew about Jeet Kune Do and I knew about Filipino martial arts, uh, back then. And I was training in it, but I couldn't quite get into the Asano Academy because I lived about an hour away. Now I was going down to LA for the boxing gym right. two to three times a week. So I didn't care. I was like, yeah. And Richard Basio, I talked to him and uh, they had a wonderful academy there. Um, so I've been training under, I started training under uh, Sifu and Asano in, um, was 1984, I believe, when I started. Uh, and that was seminars and things like that. And I've been training with him ever since. I just trained with him in, in December. I got 12 classes in with him. So it's not like I'm hopping all over the place. Right. And I still do Muay Thai, and I just saw a Jun Chai in December, and I went to the camp, and I still have guys that are that I'm that I teach Muay Thai uh, five times a week mm -hmm. right now, 
Yeah. Um, and I still do jujitsu whenever I can. Tomorrow morning, I got a roll with a black belt. Right. Um, you know, so and normally I do 20 rounds, uh, five minute rounds of jujitsu a week. Okay. That's a lot. I don't mm -hmm. know if you, if you rolled in jujitsu recently, but that's a lot, especially when these guys are trying to take your head off. Yeah. Um, and especially when you're not, when, especially when you've been 30 more than once. Yes. And especially when you're, 175 pounds and most of them are average 200 you know that's one of the things that i that's one of the things that i do not like about you you've been 175 pounds for how long now huh huh <laughs> oh i don't know too long <laughs> i think I need, maybe i need to cut <laughs> did you did, again so i mean so when when old, so when old and fat came along did it not address you well, I am, I'm just too antsy. I can't sit still. Yeah. That's the problem, you know, and, it, and it, it, hence the, the thing with like at Cornell, I will start my classes. So Tuesday I'll teach intro to boxing, intro to boxing, intro to boxing, intermediate boxing and Filipino martial arts. So that's Tuesday and Thursday. And then back on Wednesday, both, I teach both days back to back five classes. Yes. And then on Wednesday, I teach um, jujitsu for an hour and a half, uh, Jeet Kune Do, MMA, and Muay Thai. And then I teach Muay Thai at a different school on Mondays and Wednesdays. So I teach okay. two classes uh, uh, at night. So, you know, that's my, that's my basic schedule. And I have my own training and my, my strength training. If I don't strength train, I get injured. So I have to do that. And I have yoga and things like that. My wife's taking me uh, to go skiing tomorrow. So, because we got a ton of snow out there. Today. Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I stay busy, you know, and I, and I think that that is, in my opinion, that's one of them, the fountain of youth is right. to stay active, it's keep to stay the oxygen emotional. moving, yes. Yes. eat right, of course, is very important. Yes. You know, um, I watch what I eat. I try to eat good, healthy, nutritious foods. I try not to stress over things. Um, uh, my mantra is if I can do something about it, I'll put my heart into it and I'll do everything I can mm -hmm. to change that. If I mm -hmm. can't change it, I'll change my attitude about it. I'll let it go. Right. How, how do you, how do you keep, how do you stay on top of, um, for lack of a different expression curriculum, right? So if you're teaching mm -hmm. three different intermediate, uh, in, in intro to boxing classes, right? Okay, so that's different people in those three classes. Correct. Um, I would imagine that since it's intro, you, you're probably the curriculum, teaching the curriculum the is same. identical. All right. three. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, but then you don't just teach at that level. You've got intermediate and advanced people that you teach as well. Yes. Right. Okay. All right. So this is always, um, this is actually, this is one of the most fascinating things I think about our JKD family is, um, being able to ask other instructors, what is, what's, what's the guiding principles behind the structure of your curriculum, how you put stuff together? Mm -hmm. Well, what, what, I can tell you right off the bat, the first thing I always start with is foundation and footwork. Because if you don't have the mobility, you don't have jack. You don't. You don't have jack. I mean, you need right. that. You need to have that. And right. this is one of the things that I see frequently lacking: is people don't have balance. They don't have that ability to be agile um, because they've never really been taught. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and in boxing, you find that out right away. Because if you stand there, you're not a boxer. You're a heavy bag. Right. <laughs> it's simple you know yeah. and then and you learn you learn yeah. to keep your hands up you learn to move you learn to stick you learn to breathe you learn to tuck your chin yeah because that's the off button and if that thing's up when you're punching and that, that's what i lot, see a lot of people like this you know they're punching and their chins up right and go, oh man right that's somebody you who, know right you need to have that chin hit. in and mm -hmm. when you're doing stuff everything has to be guarded if that chin gets hit yeah it's a wrap. Yeah. So those are the things that I look at is first, I, I try to get everybody so that they have a, an understanding of mobility. And then we start working on their structure. Um, and there's good and bad structure and everything. 
And I, I try to use physics. And I've got to tell you, I've got to give the kudos to the kids at Cornell because I'm dealing with some of the smartest kids in the, in the country. Right. And if I can't explain it properly to them, they're calling bullshit. You know, they're like, what do you mean? Well, why? And I love that. I love that question. Yeah. Why? Yeah. And so I will show them. And that's how I teach my seminars as well. I teach the right way to stabilize your shoulders so you don't get injured, so you don't get punched in the face as often, so you don't take damage. And that's doesn't matter whether it's Jeet Kune Do, boxing, Muay Thai. It's all the same. Even in jiu-jitsu, if you don't have your chin tucked, you're going to get choked. Your neck's mm -hmm. up like that. Mm -hmm. You know, those guys will grab you so fast. <laughs> and you got, and you got to have mobility on the ground. Yes, you do. And Filipino martial arts is the same thing. Right. Um, you know, if you and once again, I teach Filipino martial arts every week. Yeah, but Kevin, but but see, but but now you're but now you're committing the sin of pointing out that there's commonality in these of arts. Course. Of course, sir. There's, <laughs> there's that thread. That common thread. <laughs> and that is what we're searching for, Dwight, the common thread. Oh, man. Because <laughs> the style doesn't matter. Right. The system doesn't matter. Yeah. If the system is an individualism. Yeah. It's the common thread that we're looking for. And that is, you know, based on physics, on how you can use your body the most appropriately to get the most out of it. Um, okay. One of the biggest things in, that I try to teach people that are fighters is your goal, and I don't care what you're, whether you're in martial arts or 99% of sports, your goal is for you to be in balance 100% of the time and to have your opponent out of balance, out of balance as often right. as possible. Yeah. And even if you're not as good a technician, if you can accomplish that, you're going to have a certain edge. I've seen people got walk in that were not anywhere near as good as somebody else. And just because of their, their mindset or their structure or what they did, their unpredictability mm -hmm. have <clears throat> become victorious. As somebody as, as involved as you are with the mind, when, when new students come to you, do you, do you consider it part of your job to cultivate this up here as well? Always. Yeah. I, I don't separate them. I don't separate them. I start right off the bat when, they, when, the, when people walk right into my class. First mm -hmm. thing I do is I walk up to them, I introduce myself. Um, I ask them what their background is. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, of course, you know, what their name is and, you know, why, why are you here? <laughs> ah, did you do something similar? Is that, is, is that, um, a carry over from when you ran East West? Yes. Interesting. Um, and the interesting thing about East West was I was a, I was a chef. That was my trade. I, my career was a, as a chef. And, right. uh, I got to the point where I was, it wasn't fulfilling my needs uh, monetarily or, you know, it wasn't giving me the juice anymore. Mm -hmm. And I think it was because I was getting older and it just didn't have that much interest for me anymore. So I decided I would open the gym and I decided to call it an academy rather than a gym because I really wanted it to be a place of learning as well as a place for people to develop themselves physically. Okay. Um, at that time I had to find a way, cause I've always worked two or three jobs. That's just my nature. <laughs> you're, you're, I've you're, always part, done that. you're part Jamaican. That's what it is. <laughs> so I, I go, okay, well, I'm, I'm going to work lunches at this place and I was a sous chef, but I don't really want to do it anymore, but I have to kind of do it until I get the, the, the academy off, off yeah. the ground. And I bought the building by the way. So I had some, you know, some uh, vested interest. Mm -hmm. And so at that point in time, I wanted to make a switch over and I found out that I could possibly teach at some of the universities and one of them was Cornell. And so I went and I made a proposal up and I went in and the guy hired me and I, I'm, I was a contractor. Okay. Um, I was only teaching at that point Muay Thai at Cornell. Okay. So I had my day job and then I had my night job. And that's how it's always been. I've always done that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I just 
started, you know, getting popular, I guess. And my class got full. And right now my, my uh, just give you an example of what I'll, I'm looking at for this semester. And it's remember, it's COVID. So we have to wear masks, even though we can train physically. Right. I don't understand that part. <laughs> If there's a if there's a scientist or a doctor in the house that can explain that to me, <laughs> <laughs> now, now now we're gonna now we're gonna get thrown off of YouTube yeah. also. <laughs> yeah. But um, I I think uh, when I looked earlier this morning, I had 286 students registered. Wow. Yeah. So I, I'm running amazing. a full boat. I have yeah. 48 in Thai boxing. I have 37 in Jeet Kune Do. Yeah. Uh, 37 in Kali. Yeah. Now, 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 okay. So, yeah. so those are, those are really good numbers. Those are really good numbers. Good numbers yeah. Um, of course, everybody now nowadays knows about Muay Thai. Mm -hmm. What what do you find the people who sign up for Jeet Kune Do, Um, they come to you with forehand knowledge of what it is. Well, we we have a huge Asian population. And a lot of a lot of people from uh, different Chinese uh, territories, so okay. a lot of them know who Bruce Lee is. Okay. Yeah, and uh, you know it's and it's a it's a very interesting martial art. It's very scientifically based, you know, and and so I think that that also uh, brings people in because they go, well, I'm not just punching and kicking. I'm I'm actually learning about angles and about different things, you know. The, yeah economy of motion is a, is a good example. That's, I mean, everybody throws that term around, but do you really do it? Right. You know, I mean, that's what we try to strive for in every martial art. Is it not? Well, okay. So, so I, I, I want to add, so two things that, that I thought of. I'm going to take it. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> right. Um, because back then, uh, a few minutes ago, you, you talked about, you talked about, uh, what was, what, what, what now I forget exactly what it was that you said, but it did it did make me think of this question. Um, the, for lack of a different expression, the Jeet Kune Do concepts detractors, the ones I was telling you who say that we lack the discipline mm -hmm. to work on the daily grind. Um, how do how do you approach? the idea of a few simple effective techniques in all those things that you teach in boxing, mm -hmm. in Muay Thai, in Kali, in Jiu Jitsu. Well, I just want to point out, first of all, that when you asked me that question, I evaded that question quite well. <laughs> if you remember, that is a Jeet Kune Do concept. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Just not be there, right? Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. um, you know, here's the thing. I mean, if you're popping around, you're just doing a little bit of this and that. I can understand that. But anybody that's really, truly studying, you're going to study mm -hmm. in depth. And all the martial arts that I've been doing for all these times, not only have I studied in depth with very, very exceptional teachers. I studied Wing Chun with Francis Fong. I started back in, back then, I started back in the uh, late 80s with Francis Fong. Um, you know, and, and Ajahn Chai and uh, uh, Sifu Dan and Asano, Sifu Tim Tackett, Sifu Larry Hartzell, um, Sifu Eric Paulson. You know, those are those are my teachers and the people that uh, I'm getting my information from. And and they're I don't care what you say, they're some of the best. I mean, <laughs> they're, they're brilliant minds. And unless you felt their energy, you know, you, you don't you wouldn't really understand that. Um, so, I mean, if you're bouncing around, yeah, I see that, but here's the other thing. I'm a chef. Okay. I worked in a lot of Mexican restaurants when I was in California because that's what made the dough right. because I lived in Santa Barbara and that's what people wanted to eat. That's not what I like to cook. I prefer to cook Thai. I love Vietnamese food. I I'm all over the map. Yeah. I cook all kinds of stuff. I don't just keep one ideology in mind when I'm when I'm in the kitchen and I don't think I need to and, and does that mean I suck at all the other things no because I have 40 years experience right. of doing it yeah. okay and yeah. so I think that that's the thing you know so um is it because I don't 
truly understand Jeet Kune Do, and that's why I'm doing the other stuff? Not at all. I, I believe I understand it. I believe um, if you read my books, I believe I understand it. Um, I've also done some videotape. Uh, well, here I'm I'm dating myself. Some videos, uh, <laughs> you know, and and you know I can apply it, right? Um, and I'm not afraid to to pressure test it. I've got some pretty exceptional students too. Bobby Gambetta, okay, one of the best Jeet Kune Do guys I know. A lot of people don't know this about Bobby. Uh, five-time Golden Glove State Champion in boxing. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, eighty-something fights, probably yeah. lost five. Yeah, we used to call him the Ghost. You know, and and people like Tamna McCrory and uh, and and oh gosh, uh, who was it? Uh, Michael Moreno, who's another exceptional martial artist, said, "Yeah, we hated it when you'd have Bobby spar with us <laughs> because we couldn't hit him." Yeah. You know, and, and he was a southpaw, even though he's right handed, because he wanted to fight Jeet Kune Do uh, methodology at that time. Yeah. And that was the right lead at that yeah. time. That's what we did. Now, you know, he does train both sides, but he was exceptional at it. Uh, yeah. Dave Kelly won the uh, Thai boxing national champion, heavyweight championship for the USMTA. That was quite a long time ago, you know, and then I've got Tamna McCrory was in the UFC nine times, yeah. Yeah. you know, so I have some exceptional students, uh, Mark Medeiros up yeah. in uh, Toronto, fantastic, in Toronto. pressure right. tests us, everything, he's constantly putting out new material, he's constantly experimenting, he's what, uh, he works with Paulo, you know, Paulo Rubio, so, you mm -hmm. know, yeah, who you're familiar yeah. with, yeah. Yeah. Rage, Rage Ning. Okay, Ray Jing is uh is from Black House. He was my student for a long time, you know, or for for a while anyway. I shouldn't say a long yeah. time, for a while. Yeah. You know, so I've had a lot of really fantastic students that have gone on. Andy Astle, yeah. great C lot guy, great uh well, let's see. You, you got you got Rafi Derdarian. Rafi Derdarian. You got uh Paul Paul uh, Nunzio in Paul in, Nunzio, yeah. Nunzio, mm -hmm. right? Um Steve, I can't remember. I can't remember his last name. Um, I just met him. Um, Steve, oh man, I can't remember his last name. But he's he's on Facebook as Seafood Steve. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. yeah, so so I mean, I I know. I mean, what? Just in Thai boxing alone, you've brought what about thirty people to instructor level, haven't you? Yes. Yes. Uh, right. Well, uh, here's another thing: the Megalores brothers. If you're in jujitsu and you haven't heard of the Megalores brothers, you're not really in jujitsu. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are really amazing. Yeah. Really, they're in Philadelphia. Uh, Phil, Phil and yeah. Ricardo, uh, I think Phil's a sixth degree black belt now under Helson, and mm -hmm. Ricardo's a fifth degree. Uh, Phil's one of my instructors in Muay Thai under me. Right. You know, yeah. so I mean, I've got a lot of great inst instructors out there that work really hard. And um, I think that, you know, the best way to do that is to give them the mojo, you know, show them what it takes to be good. And a lot of those guys were good already. Like Phil Magaris, I mean, my gosh, he's my, he's one of my jujitsu instructors and he is phenomenal. Yeah. If you're ever in Philadelphia. Now that's, now that's interesting because because what you what you've done there is quite in the vein of what Dan Inasano has done so many times, where he becomes the student of his student. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, <laughs> you, you know, in my opinion, there's if that person is good and you can learn from, why wouldn't you? Right. Why wouldn't you? You know, and uh, uh, somebody told me one time the. And I'm not saying I'm I'm the I'm this person, but they said the mark of a brilliant person is they know where to go to find the knowledge, mm -hmm. you know, to find the answers. Yeah, you know, they know that they don't have all the answers, you know. And well, I'm not saying I'm brilliant at all, right. but I'm I'm just saying that that's always something that I've thought about. Let's talk, if you don't mind. Let's talk in a sano for a few minutes. What mm -hmm. do people get wrong about him? Well, first of all. Uh, Sifu Inasano is a genius. I mean, on a level way beyond any of us can comprehend. 
and and I know you'll agree with me on that. Um, I have seen him, you know, learn and 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 compose in the moment, you know, and go wait a second, I want to try this, and just discover things as he's teaching, mm -hmm. you know, and and I've seen him on a different plane, and almost like uh, you know that that kind of out there genius yeah. where you, you talk to him and he goes, finally he goes, Oh, huh? Oh, what, what, what Kevin? Because he's in his head yeah. and who knows where he is. Yeah. You know, and there, you know, and we talk about those, those four basic levels of learning, right. Where you're, uh, you're incompetent, but you don't know it. You're unconsciously incompetent. Then you're, then you're consciously incompetent. You know, you don't know it. Okay, then you're consciously competent and you know you know it. And that's where that's the biggest mistake in the world because that's where everybody stops because they yeah. go, hey, I already know this. Yeah. And then there's the person that transcends that. And that's the unconscious competence. And that's the, you know, uh, Eric Clapton, the, the, the Dan and Asano. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I can go on and on. You yeah. know, that's the Van Gogh. That's the person of, of an unbelievable. I mean, I can't even fathom how much of a genius he is. And so if, when people don't know him, they don't know that about him. Yeah. You know, I, and, I, and I think I, any genius is a little on the spectrum, you know, because they are able to go inside their head deeper than any of us are capable of. Have, have you ever picked him up at at the airport and the conversation just just the, the conversation just starts not start the conversation continues oh sure yeah yeah oh sure yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah having hundreds of hours with <laughs> 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 just, I got to tell you I'm always just absolutely bewildered and amazed by him yeah uh, you know and and I and I've never ever gone to any any type of a class with him where I haven't learned something exceptional. Right. I mean, I have stacks of notes that most of the stuff that I have in my book mm -hmm. come from he, either he or the other influences. And I've trained with quite a few of the other, um, I'll say, uh, first generation guys, but he's my favorite because he is a teacher and I'm a teacher. Right. And, and he knows how to communicate. Yeah. Um, uh, sometimes he teaches a little too fast for me. <laughs> that's not about him. That's about me. Yeah. Right. That's about my capability of being able to absorb that. Yeah. You know. When and that, that happens to me, I just walk up to him and ask him to slow down. Yeah. Uh, and, and well, you, you and we've all experienced that. Yeah. You know, and 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 then he'll go through it like, okay, you have three minutes. I. I Girl, <laughs> I could have three days and I'm not going to get this at the level that you think I'm going to. Right. You know, yeah. Um, yeah. And I, I got to tell you, like, for me, I've never been uh, a student who could like, boom, I got it. I've always been the guy that, in fact, I tell people in jest, but it's not really. I have one, one superpower. And that's persistence. <laughs> I just don't give up. Right. You know, and that's the only reason I've gotten to where I am now. And the reason why I'm happy in my life is I, I never feel like uh, I've, I'm there, like I've mm -hmm. arrived. Mm -hmm. Tell know? me about tell me about book writing. OK. Like, I, I, like where does where does that whole process start? <sighs> wow. Yeah. So book writing is an interesting thing because it depends on what type of book you're writing. Now, I'm not a I'm not a fiction guy. I, I would like to try that, but that's way out of my realm. Do you uh, read I, fiction? Oh, I read it. Yeah. Right now uh, I'm reading uh, um, James Patterson. I started with uh, the Alex Cross series mm -hmm. and I think I'm on like book 13 or 14 right now. And there's like okay. 21 of them. Okay. You know, and uh, I find he, he's just a, uh, an amazing writer. And um, it's a little dark, but it also makes my brain think, right. you know, because I have to try to figure out like what, because all they're, they're all crime mystery. You yeah. know, Alex Cross yeah. is a forensic psychologist, and I love that kind of stuff. Okay. Trying to figure out what 
why would somebody do that? You know, what's in their head and what are they going to do next? And, um, but I'm not, I'm not a writer like that. I am more of a, more of a, a, of a teacher, you know? So that's what I do when I write books is I teach. So how would I do it? Well, I have to set a premise first. So an introduction, and then I have to build on certain skills, you know, and that's the same way I teach in, in the martial arts. You know, I don't start off with a, okay, today we're going to, this is the first class. We're going to work on our uh, jumping, uh, spinning hook kick. <laughs> Not that I would even teach that, but no. I wouldn't start with that if it was, you know, I won't start with a flying knee. I won't, no, we start with basics, you know, and then when people get good, then we build, we build, we build, and we get that strong house and then we, that foundation and we build that strong house and that's how it is. That's how, that's how I've always taught. And that's how I write books. Mm -hmm. So I do a storyboard and then I write, rewrite, rewrite, rewrite. Uh -huh. <laughs> I have somebody look at it right. and then I'll pick it up and I'll rewrite it again. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. And, and somebody told me one time that books are not written, they're rewritten. And I true. said, yep. I, I, I see that. True. I can see that. Yeah. I'm working on my fourth book on mental performance uh, it's called uh, How to Hack Your Own Mind. So you, that, you've been working on that for a while. Well, that was a program for a while. Ah, I had right. it as a program. Okay. I started I out as a it. program. Yes. yes. And um, now I'm going to I'm going to release it as a book. Um, okay. And I kind of did that as a test. Yeah. I have a couple other programs coming out. Um, one, uh, you're the publisher. Okay, because a lot of people want to write books and. I got to tell you, the publishing industry is, it's rough. Yeah, it's not it's what it used to be. Oh, no. Yeah. And, and uh, I don't know if you ever ran into Michael James, but Michael James used to be the uh, publisher of Black Mag Black Black Belt Magazine. I, I, know, I know the name, yeah. Yeah, That's and sure. he was a friend of mine. He was a musician. Mm -hmm. I used to go and have lunch with him. And uh, he introduced me to a lot of really interesting people. <laughs> Jackie Chan was one of them. And uh, ah. yeah, and uh, but he told me, pay attention. I'm going to tell you something very, very important. And he talked about digital, you know, uh, how, how everything was going to go digital, you know, the digital printing and the digital release yep. and how uh, the print, the publishing industry was going to change and how the houses were, were not going to like it. Right. And I, of course, reflected on Napster because the same thing happened to the record companies. Yeah. He, but, so Michael James told you this how long ago? Oh, my gosh. Um, well, see, it would have. It was when I had my first book, so it would have had to been um, in the late 90s. Ah, interesting. Yeah. So, so he was already thinking in terms of the internet Oh yeah, the he said magazines are not going to be on the newsstand. There'll be a few, but they'll all be digital, and mm -hmm. everything is and and the people that don't um, that, that don't capitalize on that are right. going to lose. Yeah, he's a smart man. Wow, I don't know what ever happened to him, but he was a very very smart and insightful man, and and you know I I, I really miss him as my friend. And once he um, got fired from Black Belt because they changed hands and were bought by a media company. Right. Um, and then he's, he worked for a little bit uh, for Inside Kung Fu. And I, I don't think he liked it because he wasn't there very long and, mm -hmm. or somebody didn't, you know, something didn't mesh. And then mm -hmm. he was gone. And then I looked and looked for him and I couldn't find him anywhere. But very, very smart man. Very uh, generous and um, uh, sincere. Yeah. <clears throat> but he told me about that and I paid attention. So I had my first book and my winning mindset book, um, which, by the way, still still gives me a lot of play. I mean, I still get checks. <laughs> well, nice. ACH is every yeah every yeah. month from that book. A lot of people love that book. Um, but I took those two books and I had my power suit on and I went to the uh, uh, the Javits Center in uh, New York mm -hmm. and for the giant book convention and i went around and i was like i'm gonna i'm gonna kill it i'm gonna go in there i'm gonna sell these books and i got laughed at and they said who's your agent and i go i don't have an agent oh we won't talk to you. 
And I found wow. out what the publishing industry really was about. So I started thinking about it and I went, you know, and my first publisher, I didn't really, I didn't really click with him. So when I got the copyright back, I self-published that book again and I changed the picture. I don't know if you noticed the picture on the cover. I changed the picture because <laughs> I never liked that other picture. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, that's a whole nother story. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so my new program, you're the publisher. I'm teaching people how to publish their own book. Oh, there you go. They don't need, they don't need the publishers. Right. You know, I'll probably get blackballed by all the publishers now, but <laughs> they don't really need them. Um, yeah. and, um, and I've made, well, when, when I was with my first book, I made a dollar 25 a book. That was my royalty. <clears throat> if you're James Patterson or somebody like that, uh, you're going to make a, a two fifty a book. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Um, and on that same book, that first Jun Fan Gong Fu book, I make $13 by publishing it myself. Right. And to be honest, I've sold way more copies than I did with the publisher. Yeah. And I don't have to buy any back because they're all print on demand. And I've got, you know, so that's what I'm doing is I'm teaching people once again through these programs how to do things that they don't know how to do. And help them, you know, so they don't have to reinvent the wheel. Did you talk to Chris Kent about all this book publishing? I have not. Stuff? No, no. no. Hmm. Okay. Should I? Um, well, I mean, you know, Chris. Chris is probably, probably still the most prolific amongst us, don't you think? Yes. I mean, he's he. I, yeah. So I, I just wondered if he's if a very had, smart man. Yeah, because I because I know he he's he's um he's written testimonials for your book. So I, I just wondered if you, if you guys had, had, um, had talked about that. Um, what is, or is integration a goal of yours? Integration. Yeah. Now I know that's a very, I, I, it's I, a very I, broad I, term. Yeah. I was, just, you, 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 you plucked the exact word I was going to use. I know it's a very broad term and I'm going to leave it broad and okay. see what you do with it. So integration. is integration a personal goal of yours? In many aspects of my life. Yes. Okay. Yes. I think, um, I think that once again, I look at things more universally than a lot of other people do. I don't really uh, like, I don't think that there are, um, I don't think that there are bad people. I just think that their behavior is bad. And as I gotten older, I realized that why people act out, it is almost always 99.999% of the time because of something that has happened to them in their life, something negative. In yeah. other words, they're a phase cookie, so to speak. So, you know, and, that, and if you look so at- people, So people are not born idiots. No, they're not born idiots. They're not born mean. They're not born hateful. Mm -hmm. It's something that, uh, ha that they've been influenced. And, you know, once again, we could use the word integrated into yeah. their- into their personal behavior or system. Yeah. And I, in dealing with children, I worked with, I used to teach martial arts to children. It was, I got to tell you, I take 20 of my instructors. They were scared to death of them. <laughs> they go, I'll teach 10 classes, but don't make me teach the children's class. Yeah. I'm afraid of them. Yeah. Uh, I loved it. I, I, I would point, boom, they'd all line up. Yes, Sifu. Right. The parents would look at me and go, can you teach him how to do that at my house? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I can't. Mm -hmm. Because you have to teach him. Yes. You know, and, and so I think um, it's really all a lot about behavior. And, you know, when we find ourselves becoming uh, personally, if we look at ourselves and go, wow, why did I do that? That was kind of, I was kind of a jerk. Why did I do that? Or, you know, when we're disappointed with our behavior at some point um, and we reflect on it, it's usually due to something that has happened to us in the past. Right. Okay. In other words, right. it wasn't just one thing. There was things that built up or things that affected us in other ways. 
and it yeah. came out. Is it incumbent upon us to go in search of those things? I in other so. words, to, yeah, to question. So, I think so, most people are afraid to. Uh, but I think that that's really when you find out your truth, right? your personal truth, right? is when you, you get in there and you're not afraid to ask the questions. You're not afraid to dig in. And you're not afraid to say, oh, man, I was wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, I was really wrong. Hmm. I, I, I really shouldn't have done that. And and even if it's appropriate, you know, apologize. <laughs> <laughs> I know this sounds very awkward, but yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Are you are you big on are you big on self-talk? Oh, absolutely. There's only three ways you can communicate with yourself. Really. And there's only three ways that you have three things that you have control over. And those are the same exact things. It's the words you use. Okay. You know, your internal and external conversation. Okay. It's the pictures you make in your head. Ah. Or the movies that you run. Yeah. It's your actions. Right. And they're all, once again, integrated. And, but, but, and also, okay. So, so, so what about the concept of your reactions that would be included in your actions? Absolutely. Okay. Reactions. Okay. What's the base word? Actions. I... Well, in my first, my first mind cast, that's what I did. I did it. I did it on the illusion of control because a lot of people think they're in control. We don't have any control. We're, we're just here. <laughs> you may think you have control, but you don't. You only have right. to control of those three things and that's it. Okay. So you want to hear something? Yeah. I'd love to. I think I'm going to use, I, so I just made a note that what you just said there, which was quite profound, was at 5640. So I think I'm going to take that and I'm going to do my first clip. You know how on, on YouTube mm -hmm. you put you put up the hook, but then everybody has clips. Sure. Right. I think you're gonna be my first. Awesome. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna take out that that little snippet there. Um I love it. Okay. So now here's something that, that takes us back 20 minutes ago. Okay. When you said when you opened up East West, you didn't want to call it a gym. Right. You you wanted it you used academy because you wanted it to be a place of learning. How do you feel then about the use, the 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 um, pervasive use of the word coach when it comes to martial art instructors now? I think um, <clears throat> I think a coach is actually more than an instructor. Ah, okay. <laughs> I think a coach is actually uh, broader in their skill set. Okay. Not only can they actually teach the technique but they can actually coach you in competition and in your development. Ah. Um, so I think it's a broader thing. Uh, one of the, the most amazing things to me was when I uh, worked with Anthony Robbins and he, he didn't know what to call himself. Then finally he said, you know, really I'm a coach. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I think that the word, I call myself coach all the time. In okay. fact, when I sign my emails, yeah. At, to Cornell, I call myself Coach Seaman. Um, okay. You know, I don't say, oh, I'm Ajahn or I'm this. Right. I say I'm Kevin. Uh, in the class, they call me Ajahn. That's my title. I've been training in Muay Thai for 36 years. And then I'll make a joke like, I probably deserve that, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> After 36 years of... <laughs> Okay. But yeah, I don't, uh, you know, I'm not real big on those, on those things, on those titles. And, um, you know, it's so funny to see that, uh, you know, once again, Dan Asano, he's girl, he's Sifu. Mm -hmm. He hates it when we call him Tuhan and Ajahn <laughs> and Seagong. He hates it. I know. Yeah. He told me, he, he told me, he goes, nah, that doesn't make me feel very comfortable when you say that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think it's really funny, you know. Yeah, he, yeah. Once again, his humility is is beyond reproach. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so I want you to fill in uh, some blanks for me okay. here. Right. You got five minutes. 
Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I do? No, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, thought, I, thought, I thought you were the master of your own time. <laughs> I'm also hungry. Okay. <laughs> I love it. Okay. All right. So let me speed this up, right? Let me speed this up. Okay. Um, finish this one. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't be where I am today without whom? My parents. Mm. Yeah, my okay. parents, I, I was very, very fortunate. Um, I didn't know it at the time. Yeah. You know, as you're growing up, you're always like, oh, I don't want it. I, I want to go far away from them as possible. Yeah. But uh, my parents were very, very good guides. And uh, even later on in my life, they always told me, you know, just remember the most important thing is that you're happy. So if you're productive and that makes you happy, then you're on the right path. You know, and and I know that sounds very superficial, but to me, I mean, you know, we're here for a short period of time on this this little ball of, <laughs> of earth. And right. uh, I think happiness is, is important. At least it is in my book. Okay. You know, and they taught me that. And here's another thing. When I was a, a chef, I was happy some of the time, but most of the time I wasn't. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I decided to do something for a career that would make me happy. Mm -hmm. And my wife will tell Donna will tell you and tell any, anybody that listens <laughs> that I will probably never retire because I'm already retired. Yes. Because what do you do when you retire? You do what you love. I've been doing it already. <laughs> I started my own working for myself in 1984, right. you know, and uh, um, the only thing I got to say is, man, my boss is a slave driver. <laughs> Holy unpredictable. Well, it, 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 it's, it's because it's because he believes that productivity leads to happiness. Yes. That's and the problem. The devil you know. <laughs> yes, exactly. Okay. So on a related note, yes. I wouldn't be where I am today without what without what yeah um i would once again i'd say uh persistence and perseverance okay. that's that's de definitely i mean i've got to go back I, I i'm not the smartest i'm not the fastest i'm i've never been like that i've never been the gifted one mm -hmm. and uh, when i first started in martial arts the only one that was was worse than me was the little kid <laughs> <In the class. laughs> that was my goal is to get better than everybody else so i wasn't yeah. you know and, and even in in sports it was like okay we'll take that guy and you can have semen right. yeah <laughs> it was just not i was not a talented athlete i was not a a you know a good specimen in that way and i didn't take things I didn't gain things quickly. Yeah. So it was that drive, that perseverance that really made me who I am, you know, and I, I'm not alone either. There's an yeah. awful, I mean, how many times have you had people in your classes and the people that are watching this where you had a guy come in and they could do it, boom, you know, like you show them a sidekick or you show them something and they, they're boom, they're just like that. Mm -hmm. And then they don't show back up. And then you get a guy that, or a girl that can't get out of their own way. Right. They stay, they stay, yeah. and they become yeah. one of your best students. Yeah. I, I was lucky in that the guy who, who first did that to me, um, Ricky Amador, uh, he, he, lives, he lives on the West Coast of Florida now, but he stayed, you know. But anything that I gave him to do, he could yeah. do it just like that. But he stayed, so I was I was real lucky in in um, in that regard. Yep. Okay, all right. So the last thing: Have you ever done the experiment where you use these four words and you and you and you um, you look for visceral reactions from people? Persistence, perseverance, discipline, dedication. Have you ever done, never that? done that? No, that's, that's interesting. Yeah. Where'd you learn that? I developed it myself. 
Wow. Yeah. Right. It started, it, it, I would do it. I would do it. And explain visceral because I don't think a lot of people understand what the word visceral means. Okay. So, so here's where I started doing it. During the initial, um, the, the initial meeting with prospective students, mm -hmm. mostly with the kids, mm -hmm. right? There were two things that I developed um, during, during my career uh, teaching, teaching kids. One was the whole, and it's now part of my Facebook um, cover photo, it, uh, it evolved into the art of self-defense is really the art of self-development, right? So there was a little technique yeah. that I had for the initial meeting, but yeah. I would do that. I would sit with the kid and I would play this word association game sort of, and I would say discipline and the parents and I, would watch the kid's face to see if anything changed. Yes. Right? So it was discipline, dedication, persistence, and perseverance. Because then that told me what I was dealing with, mm -hmm. right? And it told the parents who they were dealing with, like what our now common goal can be for their child. Mm -hmm. You see, so it, it was just it was just a thing that that um, that 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 I came probably because probably because at some point in really my quite life, brilliant, by the way, huh? That's really quite brilliant. Spectrum. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what I you and I both. <laughs> <laughs> right because and, and i think and i think it's i think that i developed it because probably not even concretely but i experimented on myself with mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. i'm pretty sure that's where it was born out of you, you know but it's like you were talking about like i realized that um because i was one of those who started out and had no kids classes and then I said to myself, well, wait, why is everybody afraid of teaching kids? And yeah. then I realized that in the commercial schools, most of the enrollment was kids. So I thought to myself, well, wait, you don't have as good a program as we have in Jeet Kune Do. So why am I running away from this challenge of learning how to teach kids? Yeah. And then I discovered if you can teach kids well, you can teach anybody. That's very true. Yeah. And I think it's, it's once again, it's about the, about the foundation, Yeah, you know, and, and a lot of with kids, a lot of the things that I used to really focus on were their attributes, their balance, their coordination, right. Right. their strength, you right. know, helping them get stronger, right. both mentally and physically. And those are important, important aspects. But, so is this not what you have discovered? Everybody wants help. Oh yeah, I agree. Right? Yeah. So and we are even at Cornell. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm a little bit of a I'm I'm a tough teacher. Mm -hmm. I don't let kids slide. They come in right. late. I go, come here. What's going on? Oh, I'm five minutes late. Sorry, coach. You can't be five minutes late. You know, if they're ten minutes late, I go. You're ten minutes late. I'm sorry. You I you can't sign in today come back when you're on time yeah. and you know it, and yet my classes are packed you yeah. know i'm fair but right. that's what that's what the, the university tells me yeah and you know they, they have a certain policy and i stick to it yeah you know and i'm not a jerk about it i just i'm, I'm just yeah you know straight straight up with them but people want that guidance they do right yeah. Now they'll never come, but am I right? They'll never come out and tell you, no, please help no. me. They'll never enunciate, right? No, very rarely. Some people will, especially if they're struggling. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, for the most part, we want to have that perception because perception is, is more it? important than reality. Okay. That we got it all together. Yeah. I got news yeah. for you, folks. None of us have it all together. <laughs> okay on that note go eat all right thank you no, sir. wait wait tell yes. people where where they can uh what's the best way to get in touch with you 
Oh yeah. Um, well you can get, uh, obviously you can get in touch with me on Facebook. You can message me. Um, uh, my books are all out there. I have a few websites. Uh, Thai Boxing University is one of them. I love I, I love ThaiBoxingUniversity.com and I love KevinSeaman.net. Thank you. Right? Thank you. With the link back to the old, old, old East West website. Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. 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 And, right. Uh, you know, uh, Kevin at the winning mindset.com. I have the winning mindset.com also uh, for my mental performance uh, website. Um, check out my, my mindcast podcast. I think you, they're 20 minutes. I got that structure from Ted talk and I keep them at 20 minutes thereabout. And yeah. uh, they're short. You can do them when you're on the treadmill, when you're going to work, you know, and they're very, I, I try to make them as valuable as possible for the listener. I have 31 episodes right now. Excellent. And my last one was the fear factor. <laughs> yes, sir. All right. Well, All right. Thank, thank you. Thanks and, again, my friend. And thank you, everybody that's viewing. I appreciate everyone and uh, have a great night. All right. You take care now. Okay. Bye now. Bye. All right. So.